Hey guys, welcome back to another video on Python at your fingertips. This is episode number 4 and we will be discussing about the flow of control. Before heading into the topic, thanks for 1k subscribers and to those who haven't subscribed yet, requesting you to subscribe if you like the content. The comments we have been receiving lately are really amazing and motivating us to do a lot of videos like these and we hope we don't spoil the hope you have on our channel. As I said earlier, this is the fourth episode in the series and to those who have missed the first three videos posted, please check the description for the links or click the card on your screen right now. It will take you to the playlist section. Make sure you watch those before watching this so that you get a clear idea of what I am trying to explain. So now let's get started. So first, let's get to understand about the types of statements available in Python. There are three types of statements. The first one is called the empty statement and it basically does nothing. We may all think, then why should it exist if it does nothing? So the answer to this is really simple. The, sim the empty statement is used where the syntax of the language requires the presence of a statement but the logic doesn't. So we have a keyword to indicate this empty statement and it is called pass. So keywords are basically the reserved words in the Python section which has predetermined functions and note that keywords always start with a small letter. So the next type of statement is a simple statement. It is any single line executable statement. For instance, print hello world is a simple statement. The third one is the compound statement. It represents a group of statements executed as a unit. It contains a header line and a body. The header line starts with a keyword and ends with a colon. The body consists of one or more statements. We will see the example for this later in this video. So now let's see these statements in action. The first statement is the empty statement. I told you it is denoted by the keyword pass. So here I have typed the keyword pass and now I'm going to run it. So it shows that the execution has been completed and there is nothing to be displayed or to be outputted. So as I told you, it does nothing. Now, the simple statement, it is a single line executable statement. So, let's print hello world. So, it is executable and it's single line. So, this is called a simple statement. Now, let me tell you the general syntax of a compound statement. So, the general syntax for a compound statement is compound statement followed by a colon then we have statements invented at a particular level so this is basically the general syntax of a compound statement and i'll show you an example soon in this video now let us take a look on the types of flow of control. So Python offers three types and they are sequence, selection and repetition. Sequence is the default flow of control where each lines are executed in order that is one by one. Se selection involves execution of statements depending on a condition test. If the condition test evaluates to a true, a course of action will be followed or a different course of action will be followed if it evaluates to false. So this is the main thing we are going to look in this video. The last type is called the iteration or looping statement where a set of statements are repeated on a condition test and only stops when the condition evaluates to false. So the looping concept will be, will be covered in the next video. So stay tuned. So as I said you will be looking at the selection flow of control. The if statements fall under that type of flow of control. This is called the conditional statement because it involves an execution of condition. The condition has two outputs, true and false. So they are basically called the Boolean values. So the simple if statement has a conditional expression and if it evaluates to true, it processes some of the statements indented below the header line, which is called the body. So first observe the general syntax in the screen. We can tell that it is a compound statement because it contains a compound line which has a keyword with the condition and a colon 
So here if is the keyword and the colon is represented here. The conditional expression is attached to the if statement. Now the body line is indented at a level and it has statement or a group of statements. So you no need to worry about how much space you have to leave for the indentation because indentation occurs automatically and I'll show you. So we are ready to type a first simple code. So the question is input the grade the student has received. If the grade is A, print well done. So now let's type the code. So first we need to assign a variable to get an input. So let us assign the variable and grade is called the variable name. So we write grade equal to input. Enter the grade you have received. So now the next line we do and if statement if grade equal to equal to a or equal to equal to a then place a colon and then see here it automatically gets indentated so now if grade equal to equal to a we have to print well done So this is the first code. Now let's run it. So it's asking us to enter the grade you have received. I'm going to enter it as A. Now it prints well done. So our code is running perfectly. And I hope you understand how the simple if statement works. And make sure to know that an equal to equal to compares two values. That is if grade is also A, and the values also a whereas a single equal to assigns a values like this grade equal to input means this is getting assigned to grade so i hope you understand that too so there is also one more thing you need to know i have written if grade equal to equal to a but here a is enclosed in quotation mark you may ask why is it enclosed in quotation mark rather than simply a so if we write a simply and run it here it shows a name error it is always written in quotation marks because the default type uh, input statement receives is string value so strings are always enclosed in quotation mark and if grade equal to equal to a and if a is enclosed in quotation mark the code will work perfectly and now if the grade was B there won't be any processing done because there is no statement according to the grade if it is B. The next type of statement is the if else statement. Here there is an extra else part in the code. So the basic thing here is the first conditional expression attached to the if statement evaluates to false the else statements get evaluated. So take a look at the pictures shown here. They are in the form of flowcharts. In case you aren't familiar with flowcharts, please take a look at the video. Click the card on your screen right now. So for the if statement, the first image and for the if else statement, the second image. So here in if statements, there is a decision box. If it evaluates to true, there is a process occurring. If it is false, it goes directly to the remaining of the code. But here in if else, there is a decision box. If it is true, a process is done. Else, if it is false, and another process is done, and then proceeded to rest of the code. So the general syntax is if conditional expression statement, else statement. So here, else is directly uh, in line with if statement. And the statements are indented at a particular level. Now let's do some coding related to this statement. So now let's do a coding related to if else. So the question is get a number from the user and check if it is a positive or negative number. So actually, this is written in 
like a comment. The hash symbol is used for a comment. These lines are never executed or processed in the Python section. So now let's code for this question. So first we need to get the input. Let's keep the variable name number. Now we have to get input. Since the input is always in the form of string, we have to convert it into an integer. So int of input of enter a number. Enter a number should be written inside quotation marks. Now, if number is greater than or equal to zero, zero, then place a colon here and then it automatically automatically gets indented. Now, if number is greater than or equal to zero, print it is either zero or a positive number. Else, print it is a negative number. So now let's run it. So it is asking us to enter a number. Let's input 5. So it gives us the output as it is either 0 or a positive number. 5 is a positive number and the program is working perfectly fine. Now let's test if the program is also working for a negative number. Now let's input minus 7. It says it is a negative number and this is also correct. Now I hope that you understand how the if else statement works in the Python. The next type of statement is called the if elif statement or the if elif else statement. Here, whenever the first condition is false, there is another condition to be processed that is attached to the elif part. You may think, what is elif? It is nothing but else plus if, else if or elif. It is combined to be like elif. So here, there are two types that is if attached to elif or if attached with elif and else. So the general syntax is if conditional expression, then a statement is followed. Suppose this conditional expression is evaluated to false, this statement is avoided and it goes to elif conditional expression. If this statement is true, this set of statement is evaluated, else the rest of the code is evaluated. In the next set, if conditional expression, if this is True, this is evaluated, else it goes to the elif part, and that's conditional expression linked to the elif part. If that is true, the next statement indented near elif is evaluated, else it goes to the else part, and the statement is evaluated finally. I hope you understand the if elif part. Now let's do some coding related to these type of statement. Now let's do some coding related to if elif else part. So the question is, check if a batsman has scored century or half century. So first we need to input the runs scored by the batsman. So let's name the variable runs. And runs equal to int of input of enter the runs the batsman has scored. So after assigning the variable, we need to check if runs is greater than or equal to 100. Print the batsman as code century. Suppose if we have scored greater than 50 but less than 100. We have an another conditional statement, so we use the elif. Elif runs greater than or equal to 50. Print the batsman has scored half century. Suppose if both are false. 
we need to write else when the batsman has scored below 50. So now let's test the program. So it is asking us to input the runs the batsman has scored. Suppose 115. So it says the batsman has scored century and is correct. Now let us enter 75. It is in between 50 and 100. So the batsman has scored half century is the output and it is correct. Now let, let us enter 25. That is neither half century nor century. So if we enter 25, it says the batsman has scored below 50 and it is correct. So I hope you understand how if elif else works. So now we have come to the last part of the video. That is nested if. Nested if means if inside an if statement. So here there are four forms. That is if inside an if statement, if inside an elif statement, if inside else statement, and if inside all body parts. So first if inside if statement. So here the if statement is if conditional expression else this statement. This is the if statement and this is inside an if statement. So this is an instead if statement. Then elif statement and else statement follows. The next form if conditional expression statement. If this is false there is a elif conditional expression and if this is true there is another if statement and if this is false, there is a else statement near to this. So this is another nested if form. The third form is inside the else part. Here the if else statement is inside the else part as you can see. The fourth form is if inside all body parts. So each body part contains a if else statement as you can see. If this evaluates to false, this gets evaluated. And if this evaluates to false, the else part gets evaluated. And finally, if even the else if part gets evaluated to false, the last part is else statement. This gets evaluated. So I hope you understand what is nested if. That's the end of the video. Make sure to like, share and subscribe. Don't forget to comment and press that bell icon for instant notification. Thanks for watching.